Hey everybody, how's it going? Aaron Rift here from NoDQ.com to give my thoughts on the August 24th edition of Monday Night Raw, which was the third straight sellout for WWE in Brooklyn. This was one of the most memorable Raws in recent years. A couple of major returns, a debut, and I'll get to all that in a few minutes here. Let's start off with the beginning of the show. We had Paul Heyman coming out with Brock Lesnar. Of course, the two of them were unhappy about the outcome of the match with Undertaker at SummerSlam. Basically, Paul Heyman and Brock Lesnar wanted The Undertaker tonight on Raw later on the show. Of course, Undertaker already flew back to Texas and he wasn't there. So you had Bo Dallas coming out instead and we all knew where this was going. We knew as soon as the music hit, it was going to be the beginning of the end for Bo Dallas. And JBL even said he's the dumbest human being on the planet. Of course, Brock Lesnar destroys Bo Dallas. And this was awesome. Bo Dallas got his ass kicked. It's sad that Bo Dallas is in this role rather than being a white family member. But clearly WWE had other plans with that. And I'll get to that shortly here. Bo Dallas got destroyed by Brock Lesnar. Brock Lesnar would leave the ring and then the fans would boo and they would want more. So Brock Lesnar got back in and issued some more punishment. Took Bo Dallas on another trip to Suplex City. Then we had the New Day against the Lucha Dragons. And this was awesome. I don't know how they do it, but the New Day manages to get more and more awesome with every passing week. I love this act now. It is the best thing in WWE right now, in my opinion, besides Seth Rollins. The New Day was just hilarious. You had Xavier Woods coming out with a trombone, and they started singing New York, New York, but instead it was New Day, New Day. And um, this was amazing. And you had Xavier Woods still playing the trombone during the match. It was like Jimmy Hart with the megaphone. And I really feel the trombone needs to stay in the act now. I mean, it was just, it was unbelievable. I, I love it. The trombone is perfect for Xavier Woods as his version of Jimmy Hart's megaphone. And uh, just as I thought this segment could not get any more spectacular, then after the match, which New Day won, you had the return of the Dudley Boys. Bubba Ray and Devon making their returns to WWE. And the crowd just went nuts for these guys. Absolutely, the place went unglued. You had the Dudleys destroying all the New Day members and uh, putting one of them through a table. Team 3D, Dudley Boys, whatever you want to call them. They are back in WWE. And apparently they're back for good. They're going to be on SmackDown this Thursday. And one would think... We will see the New Day versus the Dudley Boys at Night of Champions. Uh, that makes sense to me, at least. And uh, this first hour of Raw was uh, one of the best first hours of Raw in a very long time. Unfortunately, it had to go downhill. You had some pointless segments on this show. You had the Miz TV segment with the, the Divas, and uh, it just went on way too long. And then they had a match after that which went on for a very long time. And uh, it got to the point where the crowd was just so burned out. Uh, they, they started doing the wave. They started doing the chants. They, they even chanted CM Punk. So you know when the fans chant for CM Punk, they're bored with what they're seeing in the ring. Uh, this was unfortunate. You know, WWE has done so much with the Divas Revolution. But uh, these fans, they do not like the Bella Twins. That, that's really the gist of it. Um, you know, they were chanting for Sasha Banks, um, and they were chanting for Charlotte, but um, the fans just, they, they still reject the idea of Nikki Bella um, likely beating AJ's record unless she loses the title in the next three weeks. Um, you know, they kept bringing that up as well to get heat that uh, she's about to break the record. And then you had um, a rematch from SummerSlam. And I was wondering, why the hell is WWE doing a rematch when the babyfaces won at SummerSlam? And I forgot to mention it uh, during my SummerSlam review video. And that's because the match really wasn't anything special. And uh, I was just uh, dumbfounded as to why the Wyatt family lost at SummerSlam. But after what they did here on Raw, it makes more sense now. 
um, you know, the Wyatts needed something to get the upper hand on Dean Ambrose and Roman Reigns. And we had a new Wyatt family member debut. Um, wasn't the return of Rowan, but rather a, a, uh, a new member, Braun Stoneman, who um, has uh, briefly been part of uh, WWE's developmental NXT. Um, and he's only been around uh, for less than a year now um, in the WWE developmental system. Um, and at one point, he was one of Adam Rose's Rosebuds. Um, so he's made a few small appearances. Um, but this was his first big significant appearance. And, uh, you know, he beat the crap out of Roman Reigns and Dean Ambrose. And, uh, you know, they, they were pushing him as this new monster. Um, so, so far, so good. Definitely uh, boosts up the Wyatt family now. And uh, looks like we'll be getting a six-man tag team match at some point. But um, who knows who that third person is going to be. And, uh, you know, there was one guy I was thinking was going to be. But obviously... Uh, with the ending of Raw this week, that that's not going to happen. I'll get to that in a few minutes here. Um, so that was a big moment. And then uh, the show kind of went off a cliff. You had an eight-man tag team match. Um, and the match ended with Big Show uh, accidentally punching Sheamus. And uh, Randy Orton's team won the match. And after the match, um, all the heels beat up Big Show. And then uh, all the baby faces beat up Big Show. So... Uh, I don't know what happened there. I don't know if the Big Show had a babyface turn and then turned back heel. I, I don't know what the hell that was. Uh, that that was uh, very strange. You had Stardust turning on King Barrett. Poor Barrett. Um, getting beat up by Stardust now, of all people. Um, yeah, so much for the King of the Ring. Um, you had the big segment with John Cena um, giving the AA to uh, John Stewart. And uh, this was a weird segment. You had Ric Flair coming out. And basically, Jon Stewart's reasoning for costing Cena the match at SummerSlam was he did not want John Cena to tie Ric Flair's record. And then, of course, you had Ric Flair come out and say that he respects John Cena. And if anybody um, ends the record, breaks the record, it should be John Cena. And uh, Stewart basically apologized. And then John Cena came out and... Um, after going back and forth on the mic for a few minutes, John Cena took him out. So uh, John Cena beat up the guy that's half his size. Um, but yeah, what well, was a memorable moment, and I guess that's the end of uh, John Stewart and WWE now for the time being. Um, and then you had uh, the big segment with uh, Seth Rollins getting his statue. And uh, th this was actually really funny. Uh, Seth Rollins making such a big deal out of, out of the statue. Um, but you, you just knew something was going to happen. You knew there was going to be a twist here. And um, WWE made sure to uh, make it clear to the audience that it wasn't going to be Cena um, coming out because they had a backstage segment and John Cena was escorted away by security. So, you know, for the fans watching, they knew somebody else was probably going to come after Seth Rollins. Then you had the big segment with Seth Rollins um, and the uh, unveiling of the statue in the ring. The statue, of course, uh, was in this box-like configuration they had. Um, it was almost like back in the old days in WCW when, when Sting had the, uh, the, the, the boxes being given to him and uh, then it was uh, Cactus Jack and Abdullah the Butcher attacking him. So it was almost like that in a way. Um, kind of ironic, too, uh, because... The person under the box or whatever it was ended up being Sting. Sting making his big return to WWE. Um, first time since the night after WrestleMania. Sting taking out Seth Rollins. Um, the crowd did pop, but I actually thought it was a little bit of a disappointing reaction for Sting. Um, I think the Dudley Boys got a much bigger pop than Sting. But uh, nonetheless, uh, really cool to see Sting back. Uh, he took out Seth Rollins. Um, interesting match now for Night of Champions, which Triple H confirmed uh, on the WWE Network right after Raw ended. It's going to be Sting versus Seth Rollins at Night of Champions. And uh, what does this mean? Does this mean Sting becomes WWE Champion or will they just do a non-title match? Um, very interesting uh, match for Night of Champions because I've talked about in previous videos how Sting should get a win in WWE, but... Is he going to get a win over Seth Rollins and possibly become the WWE Champion? Or will Sting fail again? 
for the second time in a row. Um, so really curious to see how this plays out and if WWE actually has Sting beat their top heel Seth Rollins and win the WWE title for a feel-good moment so Sting can say he was WWE champion. Um, definitely going to be an interesting pay-per-view at Night of Champions. Sting versus Seth Rollins. Stay tuned to NoDQ.com for all the latest details regarding Sting's return to the WWE and the Deadly Boys coming back. Um, lots of things going on in the world of WWE right now coming off of SummerSlam. And uh, stay tuned to NoDQ.com and the YouTube channel this week, YouTube.com slash NoDQCAW. I will be back shortly in a day or so for another edition of NoDQ&A video. Thanks for watching.